Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be doing SSH exploitation with a tool called NetExec. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. And let's have some fun and learn some things. Alrighty then. So the first thing that we need is a target that has SSH open, correct? So in this instance, we're gonna be using Metasploitable 2 as our target, but this can work in the real world too. If you on a pen test, or an internal, external, whatever, and you find a host with SSH open, and there's no, I wanna get into the authentication later on, but if there is only a username and password to authenticate, you can take these actions to do a few cool things, right? So I'm like I said, I'm using Metasploitable 2. If you're on a regular, if you run a regular network and you're inside of your network, you can run a tool called NetDiscover. So NetDiscover is going to send something called an ARP request at layer two on that local subnet. So in my case, I'm gonna do NetDiscover. My interface is ENS33. That's the interface that I'm scanning on. The range is 192.168.100.0 slash 24. So if I hit enter here, this is gonna go ahead and send out those ARP requests to find our targets, okay? So obviously this is a very small network. So I do have this 201 here. So if I do an Nmap scan, let's just do that really quick. Let me actually take a note of this just so I remember, because I won't remember if I don't do that. So let's go ahead and open up and let's put this as equals MS2, right? So that's Metasploit2. So now what we can do is do an Nmap scan, right? Let's do Nmap and let's just do, for an example, 192.168. What was it? Dot 100.201. Okay, and actually I'm not gonna do all this. I'm just gonna do dash P 22, okay? Just to see if 22 is open and we can see 22 is open. I, I don't care about all the other ports we're focusing on SSH in this video. So as you can see here, we have SSH open, open SSH, and this is the version. And you can see that it's open. So we can just take a note of this because remember, if we're doing this for a real pen test, we want to take notes and we can just throw those notes into our notepad. Okay, so I'm just going to put here host. And then these are the Nmap results. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is if we want to create a username and password list. You can go use SecList, you can go on and use rockyou.txt. Um, obviously, if you're doing some reconnaissance against an organization, you will find out some usernames. And you know this is out of the scope of this video, but you can go out there and actually make your own word list, your own password list and everything like that. But this is, remember, this is for demonstration educational purposes. So I already made my username and password. Remember, this is against Metasploitable 2, so the concept is the same across the board, but I wanna show you guys this. So if I cat users, you can see there's a few users, and these are users that are associated with my Metasploitable 2. And if I cat passwords, we can see here, these are the passwords that I have. So obviously in the real world, you're gonna use something much larger and all that good stuff, so you should be good here. So the first thing we're gonna do is attempt to SSH, or attempt the authentication with SSH and see if any of our combinations work, right? So let's do net exec, okay? And then I wanna go ahead, not do this yet, and I wanna actually do user.txt and then passwords.txt. So what am I doing here? Net exec is the application, SSH is the service. This is my IP address of my Metasploitable 2. And the user list is gonna be on the users, password list is under passwords.txt. And if we hit enter, we'll see what cracks. Okay, so it says Linux shell success. 
So we can see MSF admin and M MSF admin, that's a tongue twister, stuck. So we were able to work on these credentials or these credentials were able to work for us. So I wanna go ahead and make a copy of that and just throw that in our notes here, all the way at the bottom here. And we're gonna continue our process. Okay, so let's come back. So now we can see that these credentials worked. So what do we do now, right? We have validation that we have some credentials that we can utilize. So now we can do is try to use these credentials to actually authenticate. So let's do, I already did this lab and I wanna see if, okay, right here, not that yet. We're gonna just do this here. So let me go ahead and hit enter. So what I'm doing is netexec SSH again against our Metasploitable 2 with a username of MSF admin and the password as MSF admin. Of course, these are the credentials that we're able to gather. So let's just go ahead and copy this and throw that into our notes. Okay, so that's good so far. So now we can take this a step further now. So now let's go ahead and say, for example, we wanna execute if config, because we know it's a Linux box, right? So we can execute on that server that we were able to find those credentials with those username and password that we were, that we gathered. So we can see here, let's come up, we can see the IP address right here. It gives us the executed command, right? So we can, for an example, we can do many other things. We can do, let's see what else we can actually do let's see if we can do ls so it is vulnerable all right so that's good so what else can we do here we, we can actually try to in this case we won't be able to put a file onto the server because the metasploitable is not but i can show you guys the command and you can try it yourself so let's go ahead and just do for example put file and i did try this i want to make this a little smaller so i did try this but it didn't work. So on my Metasploitable, I CD'd into op and I tried to put a file named file.txt onto op and I tried temp as well. Let's just try that. I can show you guys. TMP. And it just said it couldn't. I'm sure it's because of the read write permissions on Metasploitable. But if you find out uh, if you find a server that SSH is enabled for username and password, you can try this on your own. So now we can take this a step further. And now what I did before is I was able to get a file now. So I want to get a file called, uh, I want to get the file inside of Etsy password, the shadow file, and I'm just going to name it passwd. So now this is going to go ahead and pull that down to my local directory that I'm working off of. And now you can see that here, right? And we can just do cat pass D. And you can see all the passwords from our server here. All right, so that's all I wanted to cover. So now what I wanna do is talk about how to mitigate this, right? How can we harden this from the hackers or the bad guys, or even on a pen test if you wanna remediate this and put this into your notes. The first thing, because there's username and password enabled, you can enforce key-based SSH authentication, right? So disable password authentication wherever you can, wherever is possible, right? And then another one that you can do, another thing you can do is require MFA for privileged SSH accounts, right? So if you have an SSH account, you can you know, offer that MFA authentication, so you have to use two-factor. Another thing you can do is implement fail to band, right? Rate limiting, and this adapts lockouts to block spraying. So for example, in this case, this is just a, a testing environment. But for example, if we were trying to do this against a host out there on the internet, we wanna make sure, you know, maybe we can block those from uh, being sprayed. And then the last thing I have here, or two things, two more things I wanna mention is centralized and forward SSH logs to a SIM. So enable session recording for high risk accounts. So say for example, if you have a high risk account on your web server, on your uh, Linux server, whatever, 
if there's attempts to SSH, you can forward those logs, those SSH logs to a SIM. If you're using Splunk, if you're using Microsoft Sentinel, Logrhythm, whatever you're using, and just a Datadog if it's a more in the AWS side. So yeah. And the last thing you can uh, do, the last thing you can do here is harden sudoers, right? Remove no password, right? All and apply live least privilege rules. That's pretty much it. And you can see how easy it is how hackers can actually SSH into your or get your username and password if you only have users and passwords enabled on your server. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for viewing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. And until next time, have a beautiful day.